that it is about to start with surprise, fun, and who knows. Welcome everybody to the R.R. Anderson to come under the comic party. Uh, so if we could come on in the back, if you could come on up to the front. Uh, come on up. You'll, you'll, uh, Ryan will start to sign some books in a little bit. Uh, I am honored to be uh, Ryan's first action figure. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's, it's Ryan's heckling me. <laughs> and he turned down the street. He's heckling, he's heckling his own event. He's disturbing his own event. Ryan has a persona out there that people see. He writes, he does his the comics, and very, very rarely does he let through his actual views of life. And maybe once every year, if you know where to look, and I do, just the smallest crack, the insight into Ryan's world. You can hear, see his worldview, but it's very difficult, and he doesn't allow it. Man, not even his wife knows, but occasionally through the blogosphere you can see. <clears throat> Here's one uh, quote I found from Ryan. That's one of his mainstays. There are several different l layers of professional artists. There is the fluffy artist, which is the favorite of the Tacoma Arts Commission funding, or who makes pretty glass fruit bowls. And, and then, then there's a category of artists for whom brings the inanimate into the realm of the living and or forge their will upon the world. That's number one. You like that? Remember writing that one, Ryan? I remember, yes. Okay. <laughs> this one actually came out of the Tacoma Gnome uh, interview with him, where maybe he felt a little surreal and he kind of let loose. And this is very, very rare. RR. The conspiracy is real and is wholly consumed to steal away the slack innate in every free man, woman, and child. The conspiracy dictates that flimsy illusions and self-serving delusions rule most people's lives. Who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody has all the answers. Nobody will defend your rights. Nobody will lower your taxes. My advice is whatever befalls you, walk on unattached, untouched. Some say that consciousness is means for a universe to know itself. I find solace in this troop. Also, it is impossible to carry the torch of truth through a crowd without singeing someone's beard. <laughs> um, I want to give you the first, when Ryan first started off, the only real way to, to communicate was on exit 133 in the very, very early days. And so all of us had to feed all our material through there. There was no feed to coma. There was no uh, Facebook or none of these other things. So Ryan, the first thing that we knew about him is he kind of put these crazy comments on. And he'd start trying out some of his material. <laughs> his material's obviously grown since then. Um, but he did get reviewed from the very, very early days um, from Derek Young of Exit 133 made this, this comment about Ryan. Mr. Anderson is a designer, illustrator, and cartoonist by profession. His comments tend to be out in left field, but it makes this place interesting. Generally speaking, however, those comments are ignored by many of us. And now in parentheses, sorry Mr. Anderson. Note to self, don't piss off a cartoonist. The results can be unpredictable. <laughs> uh, as I think you'll find, uh, Ryan has remembered that comment for many years now. So without further ado, I give you R.R. Anderson.
<laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Would the members of Claw please rise? <laughs> <laughs> what are robots? Robots, robots are cool. <laughs> Zombies must die. Shoot in the head. head. <laughs> so so must follow and keep. Welcome. <laughs> I'm R. R. Anderson. In behalf of Feed Tacoma, I present 100 to Comics. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> 100 to Comics. The secular and apolitical cartoon life of Tacoma and her moral peoples. Or, a patriot's history what? of the city of destiny from 2007 to 2009. The problem. Most, if not all, mainstream newspapers and blogs yeah, yeah. cannot afford a staff cartoonist. Instead, mm -hmm. they rely on syndicates. That is, boring national level crappy cartoon reruns. Personal story. The other day, I was sitting in a restaurant, and I was overhearing the conversation next to me, and uh, it seems like the only thing occupying their conversation was uh, television shows. They were talking about television. Not about real people, but fake people. Uh, maybe you haven't noticed this. Maybe you're the person talking about television shows. The solution. <laughs> Open source, community driven, results oriented, archival, hyper local political cartoons. The solution. We tell the story of your city. It is three t 300 times more interesting than a fictional sitcom. <laughs> Reality always wins. Uh, why? It is intensely more profitable and financially and spiritually... Oh wait, I messed that up. <laughs> it is financially and spiritually intensely more profitable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, business model. I am paid in social capital, or local celebrity status. I'm lucky if the original pencil art sells. Um, occasionally I'll get the odd freelance job, commercial art, magazine cover, posters, etc. Uh, but now I'm selling books. And t-shirts, eventually. Um, uh, let's see here. Also, uh, I've begun to mooch off government grants like a real artist. <laughs> uh, how is this even possible? Question mark. Number one. High speed home internet connection. Click. Two, social networks. 
zillions of Facebook friends, broadcast yourself on Twitter, and YouTube, and Flickr. Uh, number three, pay the bills with a day job. Number four, genuine commenter feedback is a data mine of creative ideas. Number five, community organizing. Found a secret society. Uh, part two, use what, you've, what you're comfortable with. In my case, sidewalk chalk. How is this even possible? Part two. Uh, uh, be a pioneer in the Creative Commons. All my cartoons are issued under a pre Creative Commons license. It means you can repost them or do it, modify them, do whatever you want with them. I don't care. Uh, just, <laughs> just don't, just don't screw them and then say that I did it. <laughs> uh, a uh, renewable public domain resource equals politics. Uh, politics is a in well. If you're bipartisan with politics, it equals double market share. So consider that. Don't, don't box, your, box yourself into any one uh, party affiliation. Jump around. Keep people on your toes. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, oh. Draw the cartoons you wish other people were drawing. Um, so that you're drawing something that would make you laugh if you saw it. And that's my philosophy. Uh, competition. Uh, to comic, plugs away. One new cartoon weekly. Uh, every Tuesday morning, um, I have draftsmanship. My draftsmanship is glorious. Um, my viciousness is unmatched. Um, show readers the things they can't see anywhere else. About people in charge who have a direct impact on their very lives. Um, uh, competition part two. In Tacoma, there is no competition. <laughs> in the claw, there, is, there are only allies. Uh, financial projections. The Tacomic Book Volume 2 is in production now, uh, every Tuesday morning. <laughs> uh, um, and it should be 2010 to 2012 is when you'll see the Volume 2. Uh, should be a good vintage. And. That is the end of our, I don't know what I wrote here. Um, oh, you can see my art in the TNT comment threads. <laughs> in City Arts blog, just posted today. Weekly volcano until I was fired. Uh, <laughs> The Amacat Cafe right now is the Claw Show. Go check it out, Mr. Alexander. Um, uh, the Tacoma Weekly, uh, forget about them. Uh, the Tacoma Daily Index has an excellent newspaper article right there on the corner if you want to pick up a copy. Um, the new Tacoman, Mr. John Hathaway, broadcasts the Tacoma every once in a while. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, Vexine. I, I'm in a Vexine, apparently, so you can see a Vex. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Autonomy 253, which is an anarchist group, they've been uh, lifting my cartoons. That's okay. I don't care. <laughs> that's Great it. Comment. Thank you.
give up that ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You going to continue signing now, Ryan? Well, yeah. back to your table. Uh, I can sign or I can read a couple of these things. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll just read a couple here. I did a cartoon, Goddess of Ninth in Commerce. <laughs> what page? Uh, turn to page 74. <laughs> Let's sing together now. All right. They don't like figurative art. That was my initial thought when a cabal of city bureaucrats rejected my design for a reality-based goddess of commerce, replacement statue. As an artist, I was insanely jealous to see my competitor move forward with her goddess of commerce design. Imagine my relief when I learned that her statue was ultimately rejected by the same city bureaucrats. Unfortunately, the gap between my tremendous quantity of statue rejection letters and her single statue rejection letter is so vast you need a third Tacoma Narrows bridge to co cross that statue rejection letter gap. Uh, my modern interpretation of the goddess stands uh, with a 16-foot equator. In one hand, she lights up a cigarette, while the other hand holds a cellular phone and a home pregnancy test. Following, flo uh, flowing from the unipocket of her Seahawks hoodie are lottery tickets, a symbol of hope. At her hip is a baby stroller with a sleeping child. In the stroller's cup holder is a giant cup of high fructose corn syrup. It is unclear the relationship she has with the young man being placed in the back of the one of the two Tacoma police interceptors near the back of her flip-flops. You can see a competitor's goddess of commerce design, photo courtesy of divorce attorney Eric Bjornsson. <laughs> and uh, this one is for my friend Dale Washam. <laughs> you called her. Yeah, you did. All praise the globe. Page. Uh, page 202. If you'd like to follow around, along. Dale Washam. Eternal salvation or triple your money back. Dear Lord, who art in heaven. God of Abraham, Yahweh, protect your nimble servant, Dale Washam, from the evil conspirators who would see him cast out from the holy elected Pierce County Treasure Assessor, uh, Assessor Treasurer position for which you preordained him. Let us take a moment of silence. Within an envelope of silence, your thoughts wander. If only Democrats and Republicans alike were not trying to destroy ranked choice voting, though through sneaky stamp tricks. If only the Calacala wasn't trying to cast off for friendlier ports. If only the raccoons were not exploding. A sure omen of the end times <laughs> in Point Defiance Park. Unverified. <laughs> if only Daniel Blue wasn't trying to leave us, but we're pushing him away. <laughs> if only Sound Transit would spend a few extra lousy dollars to render some upscale folks full time in downtown Tacoma. And I have a photograph here of the Sound Transit crossing with a lot of people. Cut and paste it in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back to business. Oh, fun, one more funny story. The parts left off Jim Merritt's Venn diagram. Page 188. The most striking thing about Jim Merritt's 2009 election campaign strategy for mayor was his prominent use of the Venn diagram. In particular,
the, interest, the intersecting bits around the edges that are suspiciously, suspiciously unlabeled. Why? One can imagine. One has dared to imagine. Are these inter interest? Ah, excuse me. Are these clandestine areas in the Venn diagram subliminal messaging to special interest groups or otherwise ex unexploited by Mr. Merritt's mainstream opponent? Wait a minute. Are these clandestine areas in the Venn diagram subliminal messaging to special interest groups otherwise unexploited by Mr. Merritt's mainstream opponent? One thing is for certain, this cartoon raises so many more of the tough questions that other media outlets have failed so completely to address. It bad touches the mind. <laughs> so in the cartoon, I have arrows going from the unlabeled bits of the Venn diagram over to possible interpretations. So the intersection of people and potential is potential people, <laughs> zygotes, and then in between people and potholes are pothole people, <laughs> little gremlins destroying the road, and then in between potential and potholes, I have pothole potential, <laughs> urban troughs, speed bumps, <laughs> But then this exchange resulted in a new Venn diagram appearing on the Jim Merritt campaign site. <laughs> <laughs> With all parts labeled. Uh, we had a commenter, thrice All-American, notice that this didn't really make sense. That wouldn't it be better just to, uh, uh, what does he say? Thrice All-American offers advice to the Merritt camp to take into consideration for the next revision. I think they were going for people plus, plus potential equals solutions. Only two circles needed, folks. Wait, potholes are a solution? Dude, we've got a ton of solutions around here. <laughs> Three educations? So he rebuilt it. And then this was ultimately the one that was <laughs> scooped up and incorporated into the, the one that you see up right now. There. Commenter of Thrice All American did his good deed for the week. With this latest revision of the Venn diagram, Jim Merritt's opponent in the Strickland camp doesn't have a chance. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs>